Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Hey, welcome back everyone here live in Las Vegas. The Cube's coverage of Amazon reInvent. It's 45,000 people, a lot of action. Again, three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is day two. Trying not to lose my voice, I'm here with Justin Warren, my co-host this week, among the Stu Miniman, Keith Townsend, a variety of other great, great hosts for theCUBE, doing our, doing our share to get that data to you. Our next guest is Kalyan Ramathan, who's the Vice President of Product Marketing at Sumo Logic, but also the, the uh, author with a group of people from Sumo Logic on a great report that they have out called Modern Applications in the Cloud. And he came and took some time to come from his uh, meetings to come on theCUBE to talk about it, because we've been riffing on what is a modern application? What is a modern cloud? You know that Justin and I were talking about this renaissance in software development. Obviously the cloud wars are happening. The water's being pulled out. That tsunami's coming. It's changing the face of startups, IT, and developers at the heart of the action, a new cultural renaissance. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. So, a little, little editorializing there and opining, but we believe that we are seeing a sea change of a renaissance in software. Because the things that are now possible, the creativity, the power of developers, the end-to-end -end visibility into services, is just like putting a PowerPoint slide together or Lego blocks. It's just like, it's so easy. Not, but I mean, it could be easy. It's easier. Absolutely. So modern applications are top of our mind. So everyone wants to be modern. They want to be hip, they want to be cool. But there's some serious work getting done right now in the cloud, and there's a shift of greatness mm -hmm. coming. What does your report show, because we want to dig into it, what the hell is a modern application? Absolutely. Is Oracle a modern application? Do I buy Watson at IBM? I see that on TV a lot. What is a modern application? Yeah, let me, let me uh, thank you John. So let me start with a quick introduction about Sumo Logic so that I can set a context uh, about this modern application report. So Sumo Logic is a cloud native machine data analytics service and what we do is to help our customers manage the operations and security of their mission critical applications, right? The end goal to our customers is that now they can deliver an application with very good security posture and with exceptionally good customer experience. Now, We've been in, uh, in AWS for about seven years. We have about 1,600 customers under management today. So what we've been able to do um, in this modern application report is to fundamentally mine data from our customers in a very anonymous way yeah. and give uh, insights into what typically makes up a modern application in the cloud. Right? And when we talk about modern application, I typically see three characteristics to these modern applications. First and foremost, uh, many of these applications are indeed architected or perhaps I should say even re-architected uh, in public cloud environments like AWS or Azure or Google Cloud Platform. Secondly, uh, many of these applications are built using DevOps and agile style practices, so the rate and speed of change in this application is completely off the charts. The third thing that we are starting to see a lot more of is that many of these applications um, are built using microservices style technology, so it's very easy to compose these applications. You know, you can put, it, put them together very easily, you can make changes to these applications a lot. So that's our typical definition of a modern application. Yeah, okay. Well, we, we heard Andy Jassy, I think one or two days ago, was talking about if I started AWS again from scratch, uh -huh. today I would be using serverless. So I wouldn't be deploying virtual machines, I wouldn't actually be using a lot of the AWS right. services that we have today. So what are you seeing in the momentum for how developers are using the, the different types of stack? So we're seeing a lot of growth in NoSQL, we're right. seeing a lot of growth in serverless functions. Like, what, if I was starting a modern application today, what would my stack look like? Yeah, I mean, that's at the heart of uh, the report that we put together, right? The, the report actually provides an end-to-end -end application stack, starting all the way from the infrastructure layer to the applications, and even perhaps the management and the security uh, technologies that you may need to manage these modern applications well. So, let's start out with the infrastructure layer, right? So, what Sumo Logic has identified, uh, you know, anonymously, again, mining our customer data, is that, you know, on the infrastructure side, Linux rules as a operating system goes without saying. Linux yeah. is the dominant Check. operating system in, in AWS. Okay. And that is to be understood. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the other interesting data point. Mm. Linux is also getting significant foothold in the Azure world. Yeah. And that is, you know, not 
commonplace knowledge today, right? I mean, you would expect that Windows is ruling the Azure world, uh, but we are actually starting to see dramatic year-over-year -year growth in terms of Linux within the Azure world. Yeah. Now, let's move up the stack, right? Uh, let's go from the host uh, and the operating system now to the container world. What we are starting to see is dramatic growth in container adoption within AWS. Right. Um, last year, when we put out the first version of this report, we saw that 18% of our customers are using Docker um, within AWS. This year, we are seeing that one in four customers are actually using Docker within their environment. Node.js, we saw a new Relic had a report too. They laid out a little bit different instrumentation of it, they thought languages. Python, we Node.js, certainly Node.js, really awesome for the cloud. Yeah. And you're seeing that continue to be great. Um, how does that kind of fit into uh, Azure, for instance? What are they doing in their, in their clients? So we were talking about Azure, right? Yeah. So you look at their numbers, right? Azure versus AWS OS adoption. Okay, Linux is moving up because they made that announcement. But People have been looking at Azure and confused by the Azure stack. It's mm -hmm. almost like a black box. Here, Amazon lays it out very cleanly. How is the Azure stack piece impacted? Yeah, I mean, you know, Microsoft, um, you know, they have historically been a much more of a closed ecosystem. Um, uh, but I think in the Azure world, we are definitely starting to see Microsoft open the kimono in some sense and start to adopt you know, not just open source technologies, but also technologies that are not you know, very core uh, to the Microsoft uh, stack itself. Um, a lot of our customers who are using us in Azure today are, as I mentioned, they're using uh, you know, Linux in a, for a, for a, in, a, in a fairly significant way. Yeah. We are also starting to see Azure functions being used in a, in a, in a significant way. Yeah. Um, in terms of the entire application stack, again, Azure um, has, you know, they are, while they are behind AWS in terms of the, the number of services, the richness of the services, yeah. we are starting to see them catch up in a, in a, in a very right, so here's significant a, here's way. A, here's too. a pointed question for you, it's a tough question. To, sure. uh, maybe tough to answer, maybe you know the answer. A lot of people try to fake it uh -huh. until they make it. Yes. And you've heard that term around. You really can't fake being a modern application. So what do you see as ones that aren't making it in terms of architecture and stacks? Maybe it's legacy trying to bolt on a little bit of Glam front end, JavaScript or Node. Where's the failure or having one relational database, maybe Oracle, and trying to blend that in? I mean, is there a formula that you see that's not working? You know, I think the the act of just putting on a, a shim around a legacy technology and calling that modern, I think what we are starting to see more and more of that is that, yeah. you know, that is, that can take you so far, but only so far, right? right? Um, the underlying infrastructure um, technologies of today, especially containers, and you know, you guys heard yeah. Andy Jesse talk about Kubernetes today uh, at his keynote. The, the, there are such, technology advances that are so core to the architecture of the modern app that yeah. if you choose not to implement them, and if you just uh, you know, put a, in some sense, a lipstick on a pig and a tiny little shim on top of a legacy application. Sprinkle a little bit of glitter yeah, on things. I mean, yeah. you know, you're, can, you, can you get away with it for a year or so? Yeah. Absolutely, but yeah. when you're talking about you know, dealing with extreme scalability, high elasticity, security of the kind that is needed for most enterprises, that's where yeah. the legacy technology and just a sprinkling of, of dust, as you, as, you, as you described it, is going to fall apart. I love the uh, top two data, uh, two of the three top databases are, on, are NoSQL. Yeah. Interesting, you got MySQL, Redis, Mongo, and Postgres SQL, and then Cassandra, and then Redshift. Redis really kicking ass at number two. Absolutely. That's surprising. I, I always love Redis, but that's moving up. That's ahead of Mongo. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Redis has a huge following. It's a in-memory database, as you know. It also has a lot of shades of NoSQL. Uh, it's flexible. You know, it's very, very flexible, flexible, absolutely. Yeah. So, so, I mean, the, the interesting uh, data point in the, in the database analysis that we did was that in the cloud world, uh, NoSQL and SQL are pretty much head to head. Right. right. So, I mean, the way we think about it is that you know, when you are re-architecting your applications to the cloud, it it really gives you the opportunity to step back and say, what do I do with my data store? Yeah. Does it have to be the Oracle of the past? Can I re-architect it for something that's more optimized? 
for what I'm trying to do now. Yeah. And that's yeah. where I think NoSQL has well, really I mean, caught well, on. We, you know, yeah. Justin, we were talking yesterday, and, and Andy's keynote, I had a one-on-one -on -one with him a week ago. It's good to see some of my, some of my content made into his keynote, because one of the things I've been banging on, we talked about yesterday was, these modern databases, modern apps have, could have multiple databases. And you look at Redis, there's different use cases. Uh, you know, um, DynamoDB is slow on lookups. Yeah. I might want to have a queue there. I might want to tie it with Redis in a little bit of the architectural shape. Right. Yeah. It's a whole new normal. And it's Redis not is a really trick pony. Yeah, Redis is really popular in the Kubernetes community, I know. Yeah, so sure. as we see Kubernetes growing, then I expect that the, the Redis growth will also follow that. So right. The question is, and this is what I put, and he put on said his keynote was, the new modern app can have multiple databases. Yep. This is going to have a huge impact. How does that impact this report? What are you seeing? Because now it kind of changes the game. It's not one, it's not just, can't just throw MySQL at it or Mongo. It used to be the old days, LAMP stack. You say, oh great, Mongo's awesome. I'm going to build my app, and now I got to integrate it with another app. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, we, we are seeing heterogeneity across the board, right? And, and th you know, that is part of the goal of a report like this too, right? I mean, we put this report out mostly focused on cloud architects, DevOps engineers, SRE engineers, who are rethinking what it takes to run an application in the cloud, maybe AWS, Azure, et cetera. And we wanted to provide them a roadmap of what are their peers doing in this yeah. world. Well, we really appreciate you at Sumo Logic doing a report. New Relic has one. We love these kind of reports, and when they're this good, um, we'd like to talk about them. I know you're being really nice because you don't want to lose customers by pissing off other cloud guys because you, you're Switzerland, you play with all of them. But there's really some interesting data here that points to who's leading and who's not, and then the stacks do matter. The developers are influencing IT decisions now, so knowing the stack, knowing your stack, what works for developers, super important. We're going to keep track of it. We'll certainly invite you into our Palo Alto studios to Absolutely. do some check-ins on the report, maybe do a deeper dive, appreciate it. Yep. And I, all I'll say is our, this report is available on our website. It's, uh, yep. you know, you don't have to register, you get it. Free. Yeah, they only free. ask for an email address, which is great. <laughs> so, thanks so much for Sumo Logic. Thanks for coming on theCUBE and, and, and breaking down the report. More live coverage here from Las Vegas for Amazon reInvent. I'm John Furrier, Justin Warren. We'll be right back with more after this short break.